Well, Simon Sharma, the eminent historian and pro-union, is here. Uh, with him is the writer Neil Ashton, who will be voting yes on Thursday. Warm welcome to both of you. I wonder whether you shouldn't look at what might happen on Thursday as a natural unwinding of the British Empire. Well, the natural histories of nations are almost a poetic thing, actually. I mean, they're, but they're very, very important. There's no timetable um, of uh, which goes from infancy to decrepitude to death of Britain that sort of ordains something. Countries renew themselves. And the one thing that the campaign, as has already been said tonight, has done is actually uh, make it clear that there is a possible moment of renewal, rethink about what Britain is. And that's sort of very important. I, I want to say that, you know, one can wax sentimental about the history mm. of Britain. And I'm unapologetically not a romantic about Britain, but I'm not at all ashamed about what Britain's accomplished. Your, your little introductory section, it was all about empire, so one has an immediate sense of an imperial culture in aspic, sort of tiffin and chukka and polo and Canadian mounties. But actually, what the joy and greatness of this British Union produced was Adam Smith, was David Hume, was engineering. There are great sort of elements of, you know, modernist dynamic qualities in our life which still go on. And you either believe today, I think, actually, that you want to live in countries in which you have just one nation, you know, by itself, or you are thrilled and excited by the possibility of living in a country with different, distinct, national cultures that share the same house. And that's what those of us who are not apologetic about being British Neil, want to defend. Is it that sense of empire you think people on the independent side are wanting to get away from now? No, I really don't think it is. I think, I mean, it is there. You know, the fact that people in great liberal newspapers in London can say that what is taking place in Scotland is mm, atavistic ethnic chauvinism the observer. Can you believe it? Now, if you scratch that, underneath that is, is the relics of empire, empire thinking. But no, I mean, there are much more important things to think about, which is, you know, what kind of Scotland? I mean, the thing about in voting yes for independence is, it's not that, that, you know, you can produce a full menu of everything that's going to be done. Independence is a gateway. You go through it, and then when you're through it, then you can ask yourself, what kind of Scotland? And that's what it's about. It's not about breaking away from an empire. I wonder if you think of nationalism nowadays as a, as a dirty word. Um, I certainly don't think of Scottish nationalism as a dirty word. I think it's quite true that there is something to rejoice in, in uh, a country, actually, which is talking to itself and talking to its neighbours about its own identity. Um, I think, actually, the ferocious, savage nationalisms are nationalisms which are, by definition, from the beginning, warrior nationalisms, really. And for all the size of the William Wallace monument, that's not the, uh, this case. It, the, one wonderful thing about this campaign, there have been many unwonderful things, is that it's, in some sense, been about um, community, about a national community, and I actually sort of celebrate that. I will, I speak as an Englishman who is also British, and I was also Jewish as well, like you, and we like to live, at least I like, and I want to presume for you, we like to live in a country where we have all these different identities in our place of residence. Let me just throw that word out to the audience. How many of you, and you can do this with, with a show of hands, would call yourself a nationalist? No one. Mm. That's interesting. No one on the yes side would say that, you're, that you feel nationalist. No. Would you all call yourself Scottish? Right, OK. Um, and can I ask the same question about empire? When you think of empire, when I say the word empire, who thinks of it with a sense of proud heritage? Can you keep your hand up if you can tell me why? Sir, you've had your hand up a couple of times. Um, this gentleman on the yes side at the back. Um, I, I think um, it has, uh, the result of it has brought a lot of people across the world together. And I 
grew up in Zimbabwe, for example, and feel part of something much bigger than just a country. It's, um, it's, a, it's a global community, if you like. Um, and I think there's, you know, there's something um, exciting about that. And when you say it's a global community, but you're voting yes, am I right? You're sitting on this side. Yes. You don't see any contradiction in that particularly? I, I, I'm, I suppose I'm, I'm in favour of, of unity rather than, than, than you know, division. And uh, I think we've seen a lot of division in the world, which has brought about a lot of very, very uh, tragic situations. And uh, I've come through one of those myself. And I'm not saying that Scotland is like Zimbabwe. It's not at all. But I feel very wary of, what, uh, of the uncertainty that may lie in front of us. Are you Sorry. sure you've got a yes badge on, my friend? <laughs> you made the most eloquent case for no, actually. <laughs> He's, are, you, are you undecided or are you definitely This is yes? a no badge. Oh, oh you're a no, no. no. OK. <laughs> you're sitting on the yes side. There you go, confused us all. Um, can I, yes, madam? I think, I mean, the empire brought the rule of law to all sorts of places which didn't have that. And in Moffat, we have John McAdam, who invented the modern road surface is buried in the churchyard behind you. It's on the other side of the high street. And so that's an example of um, empire, if you like. He, he well, made it possible to get from A to B. There are empires of the mind, too, as well. Not very far from Moffat, there is a statue of the scary but incredibly important Thomas Carlyle, who's one of the greatest historians of the 19th century. Apart from Ruskin and Dickens, probably Thomas Carlyle was the most read Victorian author. And whatever you think of his extraordinarily foaming, wild prose about the French Revolution, Carlyle said this to industrial Britain, do not just be a nation of machinery. Mm -hmm. Have a conscience. Think about your Christian heritage. And one thing I do think, again, one needs to be unapologetic about as a union of different nations in Britain is the war we fought with our conscience against fascism. And when, that you, was something... when you hear that line, mm. Neil, do you hear somebody who's trying to sort of tug on the heartstrings and, and remind you of all that you've been through? Or do yes, you I do. That? I have to say, look, becoming independent isn't done without loss. There's always something to pay, you know? And there is. It can be something small, like losing a newspaper in a, in a metropolitan language which doesn't get delivered. It can be something much bigger. And, you know, for me, well, you know, I have fought in Her Majesty's wars. I've had to kill people on the order of Her Majesty, which I now bitterly regret. At the same time, I still have a deep love for the people I fought with in the Royal Marines. Um, and when I think, you know, the white ensign will no longer be my flag, it's a stab. But that's the price you pay Let me... to go through the gate and to live in a just Let me th better society. Let me throw you this this quote from Worth a former it. Italian PM, Enrico Letta, who said it's not far-fetched to compare the consequences of what this would mean to the assassination of Franz Ferdinand. Yes, it is far-fetched. Yes. Right. So, <laughs> so, should we leave, so, should we leave no. the Italian view on yeah. one side tonight? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Move you know, on. We're going to see if anyone here wants to defend Enrico Letta before we swiftly move on. Um, Good try. Who feels here that they are already living in a devolved nation? Who here feels that for the last, what is it, 15 years, you are already in a devolved nation? No. Who feels that more devolution, whatever the outcome, is a good thing? More devolution is a good thing. More powers for Scotland is a good thing. Who doesn't want to see any more powers with Scotland? OK. I think yeah. it's about more powers for everyone, not just for Scotland. Mm. We're talking about the whole of the Union, the Great Britain, United Kingdom. So it's powers for everyone, not just Scotland. And that's one of the reasons I'm voting no. And you're shaking your head then, Ian. Yes, because that is, you know, it is a noble old song which is just empty of meaning because we've been there before. And people have constantly tried to say, uh-uh, Scotland it seems to be moving away and doing naughty things. So let's make that process part of a general UK process, and then we'll get it under control. And what then happens is nothing. Who are these people? No, not even, you know, the, the parts of 
Britain and parts of northern England which really need self-government, then they need it. In some, many cases, their position is worse than that of Scotland. Much worse, actually. Well, they Scotland have their own parliament. And yet, they? you know, why is nothing being done for them? Does England need a parliament? I think it has to think about it. If, it, if yeah. you were putting me on the spot and said, would it be a good idea, my feeling is yes, as a matter of fact. But mostly, I think, that the nature of Great Britain as a federal, as a federal state needs to have as vigorous a discussion as has happened in Scotland. That can't possibly... Well, now you're presuming to talk for the English, Neil, which I think no, is... No, you can't uh, have a federation in which, you know, there are 55 million of one part and five the other. It can't work. Well, not all the provinces of Canada have equal population at all. Why? Of course it can work. The same is true of Switzerland as well. Of course it can yes, work. Yes, but that's because there are many, many partners in a federation. Federa a federation Here, presupposes a great oh. deal of freedom and authority and power yeah. in the parts See, that are Are we federal? fed up with big one now? Thing. Are you what? saying that small, whether it's small working together or small with its own powers, is always going to win out over big? No, I, I, you know, I, I, my, no, I mean, I think the United States with all its impossible conflicts and so on shows that actually you can have a big power providing it devolves a lot of authority to the states that comprise it. I, I think big, small, it depends on the quality of big and the quality of small. Yeah, but there's another thing about federations. A federation is a beautiful thing, but a federation which is simply hastily invented to head off a secession oh, I agree. isn't going to last and it doesn't deserve to oh, last. Uh, oh, I agree. I agree. It's an indecent haste. I totally agree with you about that. Well, it's um, lethal. And doesn't it show, yeah. Yeah. if nothing else, how quickly you can affect change if you want to? Um, what does? I'm sorry. It, this whole campaign shows oh, yes, how quickly yes, yes. you can change I, I, things if you want to. Absolutely, but it, it yeah. has to be whatever, you know, if there's a no result, then there has to be a period in which sort of frantic, sweaty speculation settles down into honest, detailed discussion of the future of Britain. That's not a bad thing. Okay. Thank you both very much indeed.